Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you major news developments from around the world. Our headlines, Colombian President withdraws tax proposal following brutal repression of protests. Hospitalization of Thai protest leader intensifies the demand for the release of detainees. Thousands join May Day of Action against a new policing bill in the UK. And in our video section, we take a look at the forced evictions of Palestinian families in the occupied East Jerusalem. In our first story, Colombia's President Ivan Duque announced on May 2nd that he will withdraw the widely condemned tax reform proposal that has led to major protests. Sunday's announcement comes after days of mass agitations against the reform and wider insecurity in the country. The protests began with a national strike which was held on April 28th. As they continued, instances of heavy police repression were reported. Rights group Tablore stated on Sunday that it had received 940 reports of police brutality. It had further recorded 21 police killings and some arbitrary detention. 12 people sustained eye injuries and 4 protesters were victims of sexual violence. Incidents of police brutality were especially reported from the cities of Bogota, Pereira and Cali among others. The situation in Cali was among the worst, with at least 8 killings confirmed on April 38th. Curfews were imposed and the military was also deployed in several places, including in Cali. President Duque announced over the weekend that the military presence in cities would continue. Social organizations and trade unions across Colombia had been mobilizing against the so-called Sustainable Solidarity Bill. It included policies such as a freeze on public sector wages, new taxes for low-income workers and a VAT on staple goods. While the proposal is now being withdrawn, the leaders of the National Strike Committee have stated that the protests will continue. They seek to address broader issues facing the country, including indigenous rights, the 2016 peace accords, unemployment and inequality. There has also been a fatal crackdown on social leaders with at least 59 killed in 2021 so far. In our next story, hundreds of protesters gathered outside the criminal court in Bangkok on May 2nd. The demonstration followed reports that anti-government protest leader had been hospitalized following 46 days of a hunger strike. Parit Chivarak had spent over 80 days in pre-trial detention as of April 29th. He had been detained under the country's widely denounced royal defamation laws. He is facing 20 charges under the law which would carry a sentence of 300 years. He was among seven activists whose bail applications were rejected by the Supreme by the court on April 29th. Several demonstrators had also gathered outside the court on Thursday. Parit Chivarak's mother had stated that his health had been deteriorating and filed a bail request for the 10th time on Friday. However, this was rejected, leading her to shave her head in protest. Another 22-year-old protester has also been on hunger strike since April 2nd. Her lawyers reported last week that she had been experiencing declining health condition, including numbness. Lawyers have been seeking bail for detained activists over fear of the spread of COVID-19. At least 581 people have been charged since July 2020 in connection with a wave of anti-government protests across Thailand. Protesters have been demanding substantive democratic reforms, and these include limits to the powers of the monarchy. They have also demanded the resignation of military-supported Prime Minister Prayut chan -Ocha. Prior protests have been met with heavy police repression, including tear gas and water cannons. At least 82 people have been charged under the royal defamation law so far. Activists are placed in pre-trial detention for extended periods of time, and their bail applications are consistently rejected. We now go to the UK, where renewed protests against a new policing bill were held on May 1st, that is May Day. Tens of thousands of protesters took the streets for the May Day of action as part of the Kill the Bill movement. Protesters have been mobilizing against the police, crime, sentencing and courts bill for months. Introduced by the Conservative government, the bill passed its second reading in Parliament on, in March. Over 600 civil society and activist groups have demanded that the legislation be dropped. They have argued that the bill will expand the powers of the police while placing marginalized groups at risk. Proposed measures including, say, include setting time and noise limits on protests and extending the maximum sentences for protest organizers. Sisters Uncut and Organization has also highlighted that the bill will expand the discriminatory stop and search powers. It will also criminalize unauthorized encampments or so-called unauthorized encampments, which will lead to further persecution of the Roma and traveler communities. The campaign against the legislation has been organized by a coalition of over 40 activist groups. This includes Sisters Uncut, Black Lives Matter UK and Disabled People Against Cuts among others. Outrage grew following police violence against the protests for 33-year-old Sarah Everard in March. Activists have argued that the expansion of policing will not keep women and other marginalized groups safe. This is due to the fact the police officers themselves have been violent against these groups. At least nine people were arrested on Saturday as over 10,000 people gathered for the protests in London. Arrests were also reported in Newcastle and Bristol as protests were held across several cities. And finally, in Palestine, we go to the Sheikh Jarrah locality in occupied East Jerusalem. 
Several Palestinian families were forcibly evicted by Israeli forces after a court order on May 2nd. These were among the 28 families who have been living in the area for generations. However, they were forced to vacate their homes after Jewish organizations filed a case claiming that the land belonged to them. Several progressive Israeli groups joined Palestinians to organize a sit-in protest against the evictions. However, the protesters were attacked by Israeli police and security forces. Here is a video feature on the situation in Sheikh Jarrah. That's all we have time for today. We'll be back tomorrow with more news from around the world. Until then, keep watching People's Dispatch.